Welcome everyone, Math 105, this is Lesson 10, Joint and Combined Variation. So the earned run average in baseball is one of the most often cited statistics for pitchers. And the way it works is uh, at least part of it is calculated using this formula. The pitcher's earned run average is the number of runs that the opposing team earns while that person is pitching, divided by the number of innings pitched for the pitcher. So I'd like you to make uh, some conjectures for the following questions. Now for the first one, for the first uh, set, we're going to assume that the number of in innings pitched is constant. Uh, let's just make up a number. Let's say they pitched uh, 100 innings. So we're going to plug in 100 here and look for the relationship between the number of runs and the ERA. So as the number of runs increases, what happens to the ERA? As the number of runs decreases, what happens to the ERA? All right. Well, since this is on top of the fraction, as the number of runs increases, the ERA increases. And as the number of runs decreases, ERA decreases. So what type of variation is that? They're changing in the same direction. So that means the ERA varies directly with the number of runs. Now for the second part, we're going to assume that the number of runs is constant. Let's say that the opposing team scored 10 runs against this pitcher. Now what happens to the ERA when the number of innings pitched increases? And then what happens to the ERA as the number of innings pitched decreases? Right. So since this is in the denominator, the more innings pitched, the bigger this number gets, the smaller this fraction gets because we're dividing by a bigger number. So as this gets bigger, the value of this fraction gets smaller, so the ERA gets smaller. As this number gets smaller, the ERA gets bigger. And as we saw last time, they are changing in opposite directions, so that is inverse variation. And this is an example of something that's calculated using both of these, and we've got one of each kind. And there's a word for that, and it's called combined variation. So z is the ERA in this case. So z varies directly with x. So z equals kx, x is in the top of the fraction because that's direct variation, and it also varies inversely with y. So y goes in the bottom of the fraction because that one varies inversely with the y. So we've got an equation here with both x and y. z is going to change with x as x goes up, z goes up, and as y goes up, z goes down. And that's combined variation. So we've got two variables there. And the other one we're going to look at today is joint variation, in which z varies directly with two variables. So as x goes up, z goes up. As y goes up, z goes up. So it's the same idea as last time, but with two variables. Here's an example. z varies jointly with x and y. So there's another keyword you need to know. Jointly means this type of an equation. So for example, 1 z varies jointly, so it starts off just like directly, but it's jointly, so we have two variables, x and y. And there's the equation we're going to start with. z is 24, and now we need two values to plug in. x is 4 and y is 3. So k times 4 times 3. I can multiply those together and we get 12k divided by 12 and k is 2. So there's our constant of variation in this equation. We're going to plug it in just like we did last time. And now the equation has two variables on the right, z equals 2xy. So there's the equation of variation. Now we're going to find the value of z when x is 8 and y is 4. So we'll plug in x is 8 and y is 4. 
that gives a value of 6415. So very similar procedure to last time. Your turn number one. If z varies jointly with x and y, so z varies directly. Oops. Okay. With x and y. So z varies jointly with x and y, and z is 9. When x is 0.5 and y is 6. So 0.5 times 6 is 3, so 9 equals 3k. Divide by 3 on both sides, and k equals 3. So there's our constant variation. Now we can write the equation of variation. z equals 3xy. Now we're going to find the value of z when x is 3 and y is 8. So 3 times 3 times 8, that gives us 72. Example 2, z varies directly with x and inversely with y. So z varies, we'll go directly with x, x is on top, because it's direct, and inversely with y, that puts y on the bottom. Now z is 10, when x is 30, And y is 12. All right, now we're going to solve for k. Let's get rid of the 12. Multiply both sides by 12. So we got 120 equals 30k. Because the 12 is canceled, leaving just 30k on the right. Divide by 30. And k is 4. So that makes our equation z equals 4x over y. Now we want to know, find the value of x when z is 5, I'm going to plug in 5 for z, and y is 8. Now k is 4, we're solving for x, and y is 8. Now we want to find the value of x. So I'm going to get rid of the 8 first, multiply both sides by 8, whoops. It gives us 40 equals 4x divided by 4 and x equals 10. Your turn number two. Z varies directly with x and inversely with y. So directly with x on top, inversely with y, so y is on the bottom. Z is 20, when X is 50, so we got 50, K on top, and Y is 5. Well, in this case, uh, we can just do this division real quick here. It's pretty easy. 150 divided by 5 is 10. 
So that turns into 20 equals 10k. I'll divide by 10 on both sides. And we get a k of 2. So there's our constant of variation. That means our equation becomes z equals 2x over y. And that will allow us to find the value of x when z is 6. Right, z is 6. We're solving for x, so that stays. And y is 12. Multiply both sides by 12. We got 72 equals 2x. Divide by 2, and x equals 36. Example 3. z varies jointly with x and the square of y, so that we need very careful reading here. All right, jointly means we're going to put the k here, and all the variables will be on the same line. No fractions needed for jointly. So jointly with x and the square of y, so y squared. Now we know z is 300, so plug in 300 for z. When x equals 4, so 4 for x, and y is 5, and y is squared, so 5 squared. So 5 squared, 25. Multiply these two to get 100, so 300 equals 100k. Divide both sides by 100, and k equals 3. All right, now we have equation of variation, so z equals 3xy squared. And that's the equation we can use to answer the question. Find the value of x when z equals 216, so I'll plug in 216 for z. And y is 6. And y is squared, so 6 squared. All right, 6 squared is 36. We got 3 times 36. That is 108. So we have 108x. Divide both sides by 108. And x is 2. Your turn number 3. Z very strongly with X and the square root of Y. It's not the square of Y, it's the square root. All right, so there's our basic equation. Z equals 60 when X equals 2 and Y is 36. Or 36 is 6. 
So that's 12k divided by 12, and k equals 5. So there's our constant of variation. That means we can get an equation 5x square root of y. And there's the equation of variation. Now, find the value of x when z is 200. So I'm going to plug in 200 for z. And y is 16. Now, square root of 16. All right, square root of 16 is 4. So 5 times 4x. So that's 20x divided by 20 on both sides, and x equals 10. Example 4. So z varies here directly with x, so kx on top, and inversely with the square root of y. Inversely says on the bottom, so square root of y goes on the bottom. Now we know z is 10. When x equals 14, so that gives us 14k on top, and y is 49. Square root of 49. Square root of 49 is 7. So that's 14k over 7. Now that divides evenly. 14 divided by 7 is 2. So that means 10 equals 2k. Divided both sides by 2 and k equals 5. So that gives us the equation z equals 5x over the square root of y. And there's our equation of variation. Now we're going to find the value of z when x is 32. And y is 64. So square root of 64 on the bottom. Square root of 64 is 8. And 5 times 32 is 160. Finally, divide this out. And you get 20. Your turn number 4. Z varies directly with x, so that goes on top. And inversely with the square of y. Squares y squared. And it's inversely, so that goes on the bottom. You know z is 35 when x is 15. So 35 goes in for z. Fifteen k on top, and y is three. So we'll have three squared on the bottom. Three squared is nine. Now we'll multiply both sides by nine. So that gives us three fifteen equals fifteen k divided by fifteen. And k is 21. So we just found our constant variation. Now we can plug that into the equation. z equals 21x over y squared. So there's our equation of variation. And now we can find z when x is 14. And y is 7. So 7 squared on the bottom. So we'll do 21 times 14 over 49. And z is 6.
All right, now we're going to look at a very powerful skill called data analysis. And just by looking at the data, we're going to be able to figure out the type of variation. We're going to do that by performing a little experiments. So we've got a data set, kind of like the data sets we got from the ski experiment. And we got some values here for x. We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And some corresponding values of y. So these are pairs that go together. x, y values, and each column represents a pair that goes together. So 3, 12, 27. 48, 75, and 108. All right, so we are going to test out these various variation models, these types of variation, and see if they work. Now, by looking at the data set, we can kind of narrow it down a little bit. So what happens to x as y? Or what happens to y as x gets bigger? So as x is increasing, y is increasing. So we know that that has to be some type of direct variation. Because those two variables, they move in the same direction. Same direction is direct variation. So I'm going to try the simplest variation model that is direct first. y equals kx. And now what we're going to do is pick one of these sets of values and plug it in and get a K, just like we did before. All right, except for this time, we're just picking the data right on the table. That's the only difference. So I got a Y of 3 and an X of 1. So let's try it out. 3 equals K times 1. Uh, so K equals 3. Now let's try it with one of the other pieces of data. And I'm going to go ahead and pick, a, oh, doesn't matter which one, I'm going to pick the one on the end. So y is 108, and x is 6. So let's divide out and see what our constant variation is. Well, it gives us a k of 18. Well, that's strange. We get a different k value here. So that means this type of equation can't possibly be the right one for this data set because we get a different and constant variation. And with one data set, that constant variation has to be the same throughout the whole data set if our model is right. So that means this cannot possibly be it. So we're going to eliminate this one. Our experiment uh, was successful in eliminating that one. All right, let's try a different model. And the other one we, we've seen um, varies directly with the square and also the square root. So you can try one of those. Well, we're going to try the square next. So y varies directly with the square of x. So that means y equals kx squared. And now let's try the data in this one. So I'm going to try that first one again, 1 and 3. That's an easy one to do. So 3 equals k times 1 squared. 1 squared is just 1, so we get a k of 3 again. All right, now let's try it with this one again. And again, you can pick any one. I'm going to pick the one on the end. So 108 equals k times x is 6, so 6 squared. 
means 108 equals 36k. If we divide by 36, k equals 3. Well, we got the same constant of variation. So that's some evidence that this is the right model. And we'd actually have to go through and test each data point to make sure we still get a 3. But for our purposes, if we test 2 and we get the same k value, we're good to go. So you all, you all only need to test 2. So now we found the correct model. And the correct model is y equals 3x squared. And with this equation, no matter what x value we plug in, we're going to get this y value out. If I plug in 4 here, I get 16. 16, 7, 3 is 48. So it works with every piece of data in there. And we found the model. Now in the next page you see some examples of variation types. And these are all the different ones we could try. So let's analyze the data set for your term number five. And remember the first step is just to figure out if it's direct or inverse. That way we can narrow down our list right away. So what's happening to y as x increases? As we go from 1 to 6, the value of y it increases. So that means it's going to be direct variation. So the three possible equations for direct variation are y equals kx, y equals kx squared, and y equals k times the square root of x. Right, we only have two variables, so that means we're not going to be doing joint variation, we're not going to be combined variation. We need three variables for those. So it's got to be one of those three. Those are the only three options. So let's test them out. First one I'm going to test is y equals kx squared. You can test any one you like to start things out. I'm just going to do this one. Just randomly picking one to try. So let's get a k value. Okay, so if I plug in 1 for x and 5 for y, we get 1 squared there. 1 squared is just 1, so k equals 5. So that's what we get out with that first set of data. All right, let's try this one. So 12.25 k times 6 squared. So 12.25 equals k times 36. We divide by 36. Clearly, this one's not going to work because we've got a value less than 1. So k equals 0.34. And so they're not equal, so that's not it. Cannot possibly be it because we gotta get a different k value. Now let's try a different one. Let's try y equals k times the square root of x. See if this one works. Alright, so I'm gonna plug in the first one here. I get 5 equals k times the square root of 1. The square root of 1 is just 1, so k equals 5. Alright, let's try this one. 12.25 equals k times the square root of 6. Now if we divide both sides by the square root of 6, we get k equals 5. And there it is. We got the same k value. Oops, here we go. 5 and 5. So that means our model is y equals 5 and square root of x.
Right, so this is a powerful scientific technique. Let's try this out with your turn number six. So first, let's determine the type of variation. Right, we have only two variables, so it has to be either uh, direct or inverse. So what's happening to y as x increases? As x gets bigger, y gets smaller. They're going in opposite directions, so that is inverse variation. So the three possible equations we could have y equals k over x, y equals k over x squared, y equals k over square root of x. And we're going to pick one of those three. So I'm going to try the simplest one first. y equals k over x. All right, let's see what kind of k values we get out of that. All right, let's pick this easy one here first. So that gives us 25 equals k and x is 1. So k is 25. All right, how about, let's see, we'll do six, let's just do the one next to it, we'll do two here. So that gives us 6.25 equals, I mean, y is 6.25, and x is two, so we'll plug in two for x. And now to solve, we'll multiply both sides by two, and get k equals 12.5. Now those do not match, so that model can't be it. Let's go on to the next one. How about we try y equals k over x squared? Let's see if this one works. All right, I'm gonna try this first one here, the easy one, the one for x. It's always a good one to use. So 25 equals k over one squared. One squared is just one again, so k is 25. Next up, how about we do the one next to it? We'll do 2 and 6.25. Y is 6.25. K on top. And X is 2. All right, now we got k over 4. Multiply both sides by 4. And k is 25. We got the same k value. And just to confirm, you could try another one. If we did uh, the last one, 0.696, we get 25 there as well. So that is our model. So y equals 25 for k and x squared on the bottom. So that means for any of these, if we plug in any of these fricks, we're going to get all these values out then for y. All right, so that's how you can find a mathematical model for a data set. That's one of the techniques. 
and this is something used by actual scientists. All right, now, as an extra credit project, I'd like you all to analyze the data from the ski race experiment. Now, we've got three variables there, and it can be very difficult to find a combined or joint variation model for uh, all three variables at once. So let's break it down and do each one separately. So the first one we can do, find the model between runtime and ramp length. And only using the time and the length, use those two values and test it out just like we did here. See if you can find uh, one value for k that fits the whole data set. And then, separately, we'll do runtime and, and ramp height. Right? Just use the data from only from those two rows and find another value from k there. And then what we'll do is we're going to combine those two into one model that will fit the whole data set. And so this is a, a quite uh, challenging uh, extra credit assignment. So what I'd like everybody to do is to find those two individually and then what you can do is kind of what we end up doing is multiplying those two together into one model. And if you get stuck on any of these, make sure you talk to me and uh, I'll help you out with it. All right, good luck with that and I hope you all have a great day.